So now that we have a basic understanding of how the menstrual cycle works and the overall sort of hormonal backing that is associated with the menstrual cycle, I want to continue our discussion on this process by entitling the next flowchart, Menstrual Cycle 2. And this is going to be a very short flowchart. Just remember, we're still looking at figure 46.14 as we're going through the menstrual cycle. So this flowchart is just going to talk about the two major uh, arms of the menstrual cycle, the two major components. There are two sub-cycles that are associated with this broader cycle of female reproduction. Thus the major confusion that many students have when studying this complex process. So we're going to broadly break it down and then dissect further in the next couple of videos and flowcharts. So the first major component of the menstrual cycle, they both overlap, so there's no, not necessarily a first and second. Um, it's the ovarian cycle part of the menstrual cycle, and then there's also the uterine cycle, both of which occur simultaneously with, uh, with each other. So this is a very, you know, sort of easy point of confusion for many people, that both cycles are occurring simultaneously. How am I supposed to keep up with all of these hormones and these events from these hormonal uh, sort of actions. So let's take a look. The ovarian cycle is broken down into three phases. There's going to be the follicular phase, which is the first phase. So this is actually in sequential order, the way that I'm presenting the phases at least. The follicular phase is going to be from days one through 13. Remember, we need to cover 28 days. 28 days to cover the entire menstrual cycle. The ovarian cycle and uterine cycle overlap each other and both are involved within these 28 days. So days 1 to 13 before ovulation, that's the key here, this is all before ovulation, are going to be considered the part of the ovarian cycle known as the follicular phase. Then on day 14, we will have ovulation. So we need to write that down as ovulation, that's sort of the second phase, that's at day 14. So ovulation phase, that's going to be day 14. And then finally, the last phase of the ovarian cycle would be the luteal phase. And that makes sense, right? Because what we have is an ovulation of a secondary oocyte and the leftover was the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum then will be a part of this luteal phase in, great, uh, in a great amount, as we'll see. And this will be from days, so we're at 14. We need to finish off the cycle now from days 15 to 28. And this is, of course, after ovulation. So we have before ovulation, after ovulation, and ovulation. Okay, so that covers our ovarian cycle. We'll go through these in greater detail in the next couple of videos. Okay, but this overlaps itself with a separate cycle called the uterine cycle. So they're very much interacting with each other because what we'll see is that the uterine cycle also involves three phases. The first phase, or actually four phases technically, but we'll see the difference between the two as we move forward. Menstrual flow phase will be the first phase of interest to us. This is going to be seen from days 1 through 5. So this is overlapping right now with the follicular phase. So the menstrual flow phase overlaps with that. In addition, we will then talk about the proliferative phase. Proliferative, I'm going to make sure I write that correctly. Proliferative phase. So this one is going to be from days 6 through 13 of this 28-day cycle. So now we have both of these are going to overlap with the follicular phase. So the follicular phase will interact and cause uh, and have an influence on the menstrual flow phase and the proliferative phase since it goes from 1 through 13, just like 1 through 13 for the follicular phase. Moving forward, next would be day 14. Day 14 is always, always, always going to be ovulation. And the same can be said for this cycle, the uterine cycle. So ovulation phase will be at day 14. And then after ovulation, you will have a phase known as the secretory phase of the uterine cycle. The secretory phase aligns up perfectly with the luteal phase because it also happens from days 15 to 28. So this gets confusing. It gets overwhelming. I totally understand. Take a look at figure 46.14. It actually labels out every single section at the very bottom of the figure, every single phase, all the days in a very nice illustrated format. Now we're going to talk about the details associated with each specific phase of each cycle as we move forward with this, the next couple of flowcharts.